that time again, hey? Are you ready to celebrate seriously? All right then, it's celebration time. Please make connections with those who are standing around you. Hold hands with somebody. Please stand, let us all be standing. Let us all stand. This is our time of prayer as we begin the celebration. We always remember those who cannot be present with us. We intercede on behalf of those who cannot be present. So please, keep them in your hearts and your minds. You will see a list of our prayer requests on the wall as Nick leads us in prayer. We all can take a breath, get centered, feeling the love that we have in this room, in this sanctuary, as we lift our voices to the Lord. Mother, Father, God, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for this wonderful holiday season, Lord. Let us all remember what this season is really about. It's about you sending your son the example of compassion and kindness and unconditional love that we all, every day, need to strive to achieve. Particularly during this holiday season, Lord, I want to thank you for giving us the gift of life and love. We have so much to be thankful for. Even if we don't think we have a lot to be thankful for, we really do, Lord, because we are alive and we are breathing. And we're able to hold hands the love that we have for our family here. Lord, I want to thank you for the tremendous giveaway that Glide did this week of grocery bags. Lord, there are so many people that do not have as much as we have. And I want to ask that you hold them and that you bless them and you help them to have their dreams come true as we all hope that all of our dreams come true, Lord. So thank you. Help us to remember to be a witness for your love and your kindness and your compassion. Everybody that we touch, everybody that we see. And Lord, give us courage and strength this week as we deal with all of the different things that come up with us around the holidays, Lord. We know that with your love and with your support, we can get through anything. So hold us, Lord. Hold all the people that are not with us, that might be suffering, or people that just aren't with us that we want to be with. Send them our love. We pray these things in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Right on. Shalom. Shalom. And salam. salam. to sing um, our um, community song, Angels We Have Heard on High, led by Carolyn Huggins. Yeah. 
you, Carolyn. Now turn around and embrace your brothers and sisters. Embrace each other. Thank you, you may be seated. Thank you. Brandon. Hello, let me have your attention please. There is a white Ford Explorer whose number is 5Z37156. Your cars, what is it? Alarming. The car is alarming. <laughs> and I know none of our folks have picked it up and carried it away. So you better get out there before you not have the juice that you need to get it going when it's over. Uh, all of the young people here. Hey, we got a surprise for you. The children's choir has been away for some time. They are back now. Children's choir.
hear it for the young people. Come on. And Joyce heads the program. Where's Joyce? There she is. Now we want to give you a big surprise. You're going to sit down if you want to. This is the 11th year that Steve Fox has bought new clothes. For the, for the kids. They're wearing the new clothes this morning. 220 young people. And this year, he gave $50,000. Come here, Steve. That's what I'm struggling for so much. I mean, all this morning, I'm trying to get like them. So, so that, that, that's one of the biggest reasons I enjoy to do this every year. It's so special. It provides such a great place to give us all a chance.
still smiling wide, as now she's met her country and her family. Black with love, freedom prevails. She knows that she is free. Classy. On behalf of the choir, we would like to present you with this. It says, and it's only the T. Look at that. A very big thank you. I want to tell you, when we got on the elevator to come up here, this one told the person who was operating the elevator. Don't mess up my hat. On December 15th, I graduated from City College Registered Nursing Program. Thank you, Chuck.
as Jan said, as Phyllis Kaplan, a fellow board member uh, of mine, and I were sitting next to each other singing Christmas carols. <laughs> Quite untraditional here at Clyde. Ushers, if you could get ready at the back. Hey, let's give a round of applause to the ushers, okay? These folks work really hard. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone. Um, a strange year, do you think? A little bit of a bizarre year. Some very weird and startling and odd things happen. When I think back across this year, um, the good news is the human spirit. I don't know about you, but I feel like the human spirit has kicked into a different level. The human spirit once again says, uh-uh, we are not going to uh, succumb to violence. We are not going to succumb to overlooking what's important. We're going to do what's in our hearts. 
the people here at Glide, 220 employees, folks, 220 employees every single day come to this place because of their spirit, because of their commitment to service, because of their commitment to the fact that they don't think it's right that there are people out on the streets without a place to live. They don't think it's right that there are people out on the street who don't have food or shelter or love, unconditional love or acceptance in society. I don't think it's right either. That's why I come to Glide. And ushers, if you could get ready and start at the back. What I'd like you to get in touch with this morning is your own human spirit. Um, Claire and I made a decision this week, which is that we are going to match the offering today. Now, for those of you that were here at the 9, you're allowed to give again at the 11. Those, were, those donations will not be omitted in the offering. Um, so I want you to give generously, because guess what? This actually wasn't a good year financially. It wasn't a good year for us financially, and probably for some of you it wasn't a good year either. But you know what? That's when I think it actually matters most. When you have to look into your heart about what's important, and make sacrifices about the things that you think are priorities. And for us, the priority is that these services, the 52 programs that glide, continue and grow and flourish. That will make our life much more meaningful than any material object could ever make our lives. So what I want to ask you this morning is, make Claire and I pay. Put more in this morning. We will match whatever is in the 9 and the 11 o'clock offering and go directly to the programs at Glide. So I really hope today... <laughs> ...that you will give generously. I saw some people at the 9 o'clock that said that they reached into their pocket a little bit more. They were laughing. They thought that was hysterical. <laughs> um, I bumped into somebody on the street who told me that the 9 o'clock offering was $200,000. Um, I immediately called my mortgage broker and I'm now mortgaging my house. But nevertheless, the point of the... <laughs> I've often said I want to take him around with me, you know, wherever I go. We've got to work on that transition a little bit, but I think we'll get it. I could get the ensemble to say good morning, Amy and Ronnie, to come with me. I think life could be a little bit better every day. So today, give generously, please. This is an amazing place um, for many of you. I also want you guys to give yourself a round of applause. Come on, just clap wild. <laughs> All right. We're getting it. We're getting it. Yeah. I'm standing up. You guys have really come through for us. You've heard me say it and other people doing the offering that we get about 65% of all of our revenues in this quarter. We were way behind, way, way, way behind. We're not caught up yet, but we're getting closer. There's been radio ads, there's been lots of stuff, and I know that every single one of you has supported Glide the most that you can. So from my heart and from the board's heart and from the staff's heart, I just want to tell you there is not a finer group of people that we can be associated with. So thank you all for being as generous as you've been this year. <laughs> Telling you, it's, it's, it's working, Ronnie. Oh, I have one. Yes, I have my own pink slip. Yes. I'll move it faster, I promise. Okay, in your pews, there are pink pledge cards which basically have your pledge, what you'd like to pledge for the year. This is important to us because it helps us budget. And uh, we need to know your pledges. We really would love you to pledge for 2002. <laughs> Many of you here have been very generous for 2001. We need you to pledge again for 2002. Fill those out, give them to the ushers, and uh, we'll collect them. Okay, let's see. We're not there yet. Almost, almost. Okay, Julius. We got it. We're coming. You all right? Everybody okay back there? Okay, good. Just checking on my buds. All right. 
We still need volunteers on December 28th and 29th to serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So if you're interested, Freedom Hall, sign up at the volunteer table. On Christmas Eve, which is tomorrow night, believe it or not, for those of you that haven't done your shopping, hold that thought. We're going to help you this morning do your shopping. Put a bookmark there. But tomorrow night, Christmas Eve, the House of Prime Rib has donated 2,000 pounds a prime rib to serve the people for lunch at Glide. So I just want you all to know House of Prime Rib has done that. Please be nice to the House of Prime Rib. They're terrific. Joe Betts, they're great people and very, very generous. 2,000 pounds to serve the people wow. that really need it. So. What time is lunch? <laughs> what time is lunch tomorrow? 11 to 2. All right. So we'll be watching for you. On December 25th, which is Tuesday, we will be serving a Christmas feast of turkey, ham, and all the trimmings throughout the day. There will also be two celebrations, the 9 and the 11. Please join us for Christmas celebrations here at Glide. Prayer group meets every Wednesday at 5.30 in Freedom Hall, and Bible study meets every Thursday at 6 p.m. in room 206. Okay, let's go. Now, I know many of you... I'm gonna sing, actually, no. Um, I know many of you have not done all of your shopping yet. Am I right? Can I get a show of hands of people that still need to buy things? Come on, raise. There's gotta be more procrastinators than that. Come on, time to come out about who hasn't done their shopping. We have opportunities that you cannot imagine. We have tapes by Pastor Fitch. Jan and Cecil, audio and video tapes of today's celebrations. Come on, guys, stay up here. We got to work it a little bit harder. Tapes and CDs of the Glide Ensemble, including Sounds of Hope, the new CD, which is on sale downstairs. Any opportunity they can get to do this, you can see they're very happy about it. Thank you. Very nice. Okay, now go back. Back. Yeah, okay. Anyway, our new t uh, tape and CD is downstairs. It's also available in record stores throughout the Bay Area. We were actually at Virgin Mega Store on Thursday night and sold the place out. The Glide Ensemble sang there. That was great. But we have more tapes and CDs, t-shirts, sweatshirts, caps, sports bottles, note cards, books available in Freedom Hall. All the proceeds go to the programs. And to find out more about what we're doing, www.glide.org is our website. Now, right after this uh, next song by the Glide Ensemble, we will be blessed to hear both Reverend Cecil Williams and our pastor, Douglas Fitch. They're both giving a sermon today. Yeah. I think it's, I'm not, I don't think it's every other word. They were practicing that for a while, but they decided that the every other, they're going to save the every other word thing for another time. Um, but they will both be preaching, so that should be great. And I stand between you and the Glide Ensemble. I used to think that I could not go on Life was just an awful song But now I know the meaning of God's love I'm leaning on the everlasting arm if I can see it, then I can be it. If I can believe it, there's nothing to it. 
I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. I can soar. See me running through that open door. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. See, I was on the verge of breaking down. Sometimes silence can seem so loud. There are miracles. In this life, I must achieve. But first, I know it starts inside with me. If I can see it, then I can be it. If I can believe it, there's nothing to it. I be. I can't lie, I know I can touch the sky Think about it every night and day Spread my wings and I'll fly away I believe I can soar See me running through that open door I believe I can fly I believe I can fly I believe I can Cause I believe in miracles Oh, if I can see it Then I can be it If I can believe it There's nothing to
Kirk, Ron Cullum and the Change Band. I've wanted to do this for a long time. Uh, am I not uh, wired for sound yet? Okay. Move it up. Move it up. I've been wanting to do this, to present them professionally. I want you to bow professionally for us this morning. You're so exceptional, so extraordinary. Let us have it. The Glide Ensemble! <laughs> Give me now. It's just a little thing, but they are marvelous indeed. Thank you so very, very much. Signing for us this morning, choreographing as he signs, Dignan Phoenix Baines. Cecil and I will be a tag team this morning. Uh, I'll take 10 and give him the rest of the time. You take 10, okay, okay. Um, at this Christmas time, it is just a joy to be at Glide. Let us pray. Oh God, may we see in all those who are around us the presence of your spirit and may that same spirit be seen in us. Amen. Amen. At Christmas time, it's about searching and finding. The sermon for this morning, brief as it may be, searching for your gift. Searching for your star this morning. For you see, when the new is born, and when it is of God, new life and new hope it brings to everybody, then it claims us. It makes a claim on our lives. It makes demands of us. Forces us to change. It is how God acts in human history. But you got to search for your star. And your star, and your star, and your star. Eugene Peterson says this way in his book, The Message, the Bible, translated in his language. Astrologers from the East, wise men, arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the child Jesus who is born to be king? We saw the rising of his star. Herod pretended to be as devout as they were, got them to tell him exactly when the birth star appeared. Then he said, go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, I'll join you at once in your worship. Praise God. But in a dream, the wise men were warned not to report back to Herod but return to their own country by another way. It's time for us to do some searching this morning. Huh? Search until we find our star, for who of us knows really when an extraordinary gift from God is being birthed in our very midst? This morning you heard it on stage. All of those children, hmm? There are some stars here somewhere, amen. Out here among us, there are stars. You see, tradition has it that um, there were at least three kings who came from the east, maybe more, but at least three. Caspar of Tarsus, Melchior of Arabia, and Balthasar of Sheba, representing different cultures, different nations, different religions, and different races. And they saw a star that led them to Jesus, who became a gift from God for humankind. And having found that star for themselves, their journey was redirected. Hallelujah. Their lives were changed. Amen. And they went away hopeful men. 
Looking back, we now know why they call him wise men. Huh? To be true to eyes this morning is to likewise search for our stars. What is coming to birth in our age of death? To be wise is to search for signs of peace and hope in our time amidst our protracted time of violence. Because so many of us have become so accustomed to violence and death and killing, we act as though it's the norm for living. But we ought to see it for what it really is. It is abnormal and it is spiritually malignant to the community. We began the year 2001, the first year of the millennium to make it qualitatively different than the last century of pain and suffering, only to come to the end of this year under a heavy cloud of fear, a heavy cloud of despair, and near hopelessness. But this is exactly the kind of times that it takes wise women and wise men to look passionately for God's gift for new life for us, to search for that fresh possibility of hope which God labors to bring to birth in the womb of our community and in the womb of our world. Are you looking this morning? Are you searching for your star? And be aware, there are always obstacles when somebody wants something new. <laughs> there are always obstacles and roadblocks when the new is about ready to appear. Huh? But there are those who would pretend that they are for freedom and for love and compassion and they want to empower people. You know, the Herods of our world, those who are entrenched in their positions, those who are threatened by newness, huh? those who resent new possibilities and, and, and they set out to kill and stifle the process of, of new birth or human institutions or even for ourselves, they are all around us. But you can't let your search be denied this morning. Amen, huh? Hmm? You know, when, when you start recovering just the very day you step outside that door, there are the enemy out there. They're lined up, huh? They say, come on, I've got some more stuff for you. Anywhere, there are always obstacles to finding hope. Always those who would keep us from finding our stars. But we got to stand. You got to stand. You got to keep on standing. You got to keep on trying day in and day out. We have to stand with people who are oppressed. We have to stand with folk who call us names. But, but it is right there in the midst of all of this that God has a way of surprising us with the unexpected. <laughs> hmm? God sneaks into our world. Hey Amen, huh? Oh, yes, God sneaks in in the little obscure towns of Bethlehem, amen, the little obscure towns of San Angelo, Texas, huh? Uh, 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 in the backwaters of our world, huh, where we presume nothing good can come from it. What good can come from your community, huh? What good can come from your community? What good can come from what, huh? God has a way of sneaking in on us. People that we assume and presume are dull, amen, huh? People who we presume are slow. People we presume don't have any of the gifts that we think they ought to have. Oh, thank God. God is God, amen. And God knows better. God knows better. For when the new is born and when it is of God, it then lays a claim on us. It demands of us that we give it up for humanity. Oh, it happened on September the 11th. Hmm? Whole lot of folk died, but on December the 19th, something happened here. Hallelujah. In this community, a new community was born here at Glide on December the 19th. Huh? Sikhs and Muslims and Jews and Christians and Buddhists and gays, and lesbians, and bisexuals, and transgender, and heterosexuals, Asian American, African Americans, Arab Americans, Native Americans, Indian Americans, Japanese Americans, Chinese Americans, Anglo Americans, 
Filipino Americans stood side by side, hand in hand, hallelujah. A new community was born. Nobody saw that before. A new community was born. Unexpected. Sneaks in on us. Amen. Oh, yes, God sneaks in upon us. Amen. When we least expect it, huh? There they were standing side by side, having converted and adapted Henry Ford's assembly line to our needs. Amen. Huh? We had all those bags being being filled with food, huh? And then putting a turkey in the bag, huh? And then passing it on the line to the Sikh, to the Arab, huh? To the Muslim, to all those in the line. And then together, together, we gave it out to the poor of the land, to the homeless, to the hopeless, to those who were desperate and despairing. That's what God does when you find your star. When you find your star, new life, new hope to all he brings. True wisdom, you see, sees life as a search for God, a search for the divine who waits to be born in each one of us. And when found, we lay ourselves at the feet of God as a gift because the offering of ourselves is the only real gift within our giving. Search until you find your star this morning. Are you searching? Huh? Are you not satisfied yet? I believe that God has a gift for you at this Christmas time. Amen. And I ain't talking about that diamond ring either. <laughs> I'm saying God has new life and new hope. But you got to search for him until you have found him with all your heart. Amen. And amen. I said at the 11 o'clock, I mean the 9 o'clock, that I needed, we needed another microphone, and I knew somebody would help us out. One of the members came up after the 9 o'clock and gave me a check that is blank but signed by her. And she said, get a new microphone. <laughs> I kept looking at that check. <laughs> See if it's real. <laughs> See if it is real. I tell you, it's real. I'm holding my watch in my hand. Okay. I'm hold. You can't hear me. What happened to the microphone? Now can you hear me? Can you hear me in the balcony? I want to just cut through some stuff real quick. What I want to say has to do with the fact that Peterson also, Douglas quotes him quite often, and Douglas was one who brought Peterson here. And I'm glad you did, brother. <laughs> Peterson says that Mary went with Joseph. She was his fiancé, fiancé, okay? That meant that they were not married. But they went to Joseph's hometown. And in a short time, a baby was born. And the fact that the baby was born not in the inn, but in the manger outside, where there were animals and hay and 
you know what I'm talking about. You know, it's just, it was a messy situation, you know. But rather than be born in a manger, Jesus is born in a messy situation. You see, two strikes against Jesus. Number one, Mary was not married. Secondly, they didn't get a hotel room. Now you got to understand that that's the way that love comes. That's the way love is. It comes, Douglas talking about sneaking in. Love sneaks in. Even at the most unexpected places. You would have thought that, that the people were expecting a king to be born. And yet, a child. A child born in the worst circumstances. And something happens. Love came down at Christmas. And I've been saying that for some time, for years. Love came down at Christmas. This year, I want to announce to you that love comes up at Christmas. Love comes from the lowly. Love comes from those who are least among us. Love comes for those who are misused and abused and called all sorts of names. Love comes from those who are put down and who have never been put up. Love comes from those who are in positions of knowing that one day something might happen to them, like violence. Love comes even in violence. Love comes at the zero center. Love comes from up rather than, or, or rather comes up rather than looking always up. People are always looking for something to come up there. And it's already here. They're wading in it, like wading the water, children. Wade in the water. God's going to trouble the water. That's why we don't want to wade in the water, because we know it's going to be trouble. And you know you got to come out of it. So what I want to do today is help you to understand that it is time to come out of struggle and time to embrace love. I'm talking about this new kind of love. See, you can't have love. I want you to listen to this because it's very important. You can't have love in and of itself. It just doesn't happen. Love comes because people are free to love. That's the kind of love I'm talking about. I want you to understand that I don't have no cheap kind of love. Cheap love won't get you very far. Cheap love will run you in the ground. Cheap love will keep you going around and round and round. Cheap love will make you think that you've got the sweetest thing in town when you just don't have very much going for yourself. That's cheap love. Cheap love needs something to value it. And what values love is freedom. See, uh -oh, the mother says one writer, the mother of courage, honesty, and love is freedom. That's the mother. See, you, you got to have something to give birth to love, something to nurture love, something to lift it up. That's the kind of love I'm talking about. It's the kind of love that only comes in the manger where the child is born. And just think, the child was never accepted even unto its death. Men and women were born to act, not to speculate. We are too speculative about what we do. We keep thinking, oh Lord, if I just get, if I just do, if I just make, if it just works out, stop speculating about love. You gotta live love every day, every moment, every hour. Your love can grow.
the love of the babe grew out of the manger and the love kept growing and growing and expanding and expanding and the love would not give up because it knew where it came from it knew its value what we've got to do is begin to understand that love comes listen to this in the most unexpected events love comes at the most difficult times and so love comes love comes because it takes shape in freedom and if it doesn't take shape in freedom it does not take shape you see so love comes at the most unexpected time it was love come on now that's what it was that's why the wise men went to Jesus followed the star it was love that drew them there it was love that took them on their journey and so it's love folks it's love it's love you, you, we say how do we get over these problems start loving some how are we gonna move on start loving some how are we gonna get our head straight start loving some how are we gonna get our hearts and our souls moving as we should get them moving love sometimes just keep love and try love if you don't get a good do all right i'll put another get a good dose of love you know what i mean you know what i mean by a good dose of love get disappointed sometimes get put down sometimes get people talking about you sometimes make sure that you understand that the more they talk the greater love you have you move from that so that you don't let anybody pull you down. Love conquers all. That's just there. <laughs> what we need is love that is real. What we need is love that's real and the love that will heal. We need love that's tender and love that's kind, love that reaches all humankind. We need love that came from a lowly manger. It's the kind of love that will reach out to a stranger. We need the love that rhymes with life. We need a love that gets to the bottom of things. We need a love that won't stop until everybody that Douglas talked about everybody that we created this new community here at Glot. everybody ought to understand that there is one place in the world that love will prevail and that is at this church called Glide. don't ever give up your love for anybody make it sure that it includes everybody that's love Take love to ground zero. And remember the ground zero is everywhere. Oh, I know people say, well, we're in suburbia. We don't have to wear, yes, you do. Oh, yes, you do. You do have to concern yourself. First of all, you ought to concern yourself about you and your neighbor and your kin folks. Don't ever forget your kin folks. I know I'm hitting something hard when I talk about your kin folks. You hear what I'm saying? And so make sure that love is at ground zero because that's where people die. That's where people get hurt. That's where people get dismayed. That's where people get in despair. That's where people go down. That's where people don't understand. That's where people begin to understand that death is the only way. No, it's not. No, it's not. When love comes in at ground zero, all of a sudden it all comes up again. And from the ashes of nothingness, we can build something that will make humanity turn its head and embrace the love that's at the manger. Now, I got, I got two minutes to say this. It started with suffering, hurt, and pain. It started with no hope and no meaning and no grace it started with the oppressed and the downtrodden and now we can say 
that the second act of life means that only those who have the courage to reflect on praxis understands, understand within the view from below. You have to act from below. And when you do, you begin to see all of the suffering. It was here all last week and the week before that and the week before that. And it'll be here tomorrow and the next day and the next day into the new year. It's going to always be around because Glide has chosen, made a decision that what it's going to do, it will stay with those who are lifeless and those who are longing and those who are yearning. Yes, we will stay with those who have been told that they are no good or that they are nobody because of their sexual orientation. I want to tell you something. I got a letter the other day that said, why you got all those gays and lesbians around Glide? And I said, thank you, God, for all the gays and lesbians we got here at Glide. And I got another letter of a man threatening, saying, you know, we don't quite understand what y'all are trying to do at Glide. And I sent him back a response. You don't have to understand. Don't you know that? We're not trying to prove anything to you. You don't have time to understand because you've got your own tower built. But one of these days, one of these days, love's going to come. You see, not only do I agree with Doug on this, God's going to sneak in on you. Love is going to come. And when your love comes, you may not be able to recognize it. You may not be able to embrace it. You may not be able to touch it. You may not be able to stand up and say, that's love. But listen to me. When love comes, it will not leave you alone. You're going to keep going and keep going and keep on going. And one of these days, love's going to catch your heart. And one of these days, love's going to catch your your soul and one of these days love's gonna catch your head and it's gonna say your time is up it is now or forevermore and so so my brothers and my sisters and so the angels come to even visit one who has a babe out of marriage and who can't get in the hotel but look what happened. The one who came is the one who loves everyone, no matter who we are. Thank God. Thank God for love. Thank God for real love. Thank you, God. We are so blessed at this season of the year. And so, it is now time. Time to say, Lord, we now will experience your love as it came up at Christmas. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.